Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the Bus and Christian Kids podcast, where we dive deep on the two different outlooks of Christianity. My name is Micah Kilmer. And my name is Giuseppe. Hey Micah, are you ready to start the show? Let's go! Let's go! Bust and Christian podcast is heel. Julius. Yeah. You're excited, man? Yes. Very excited. Got my boy Isaiah mm-hmm. on the podcast. And it's a special lady. Want to yeah. introduce her to Isaiah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is Bowery. Hi. My name is Isaiah Alfie. He, they already said my name, so. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man. How was you guys' day today? Long. Long. Tiring. Mm-hmm. That's oh, yeah. kind of, for me. Sounds kind of Has depressing. the struggle been real? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, my, my day's been pretty good, man. Um, we uh, um, we basically went soul winning, bus visiting today, and uh, um, try to get ready for tomorrow for Easter and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's... Been the same old, same old on Saturdays. My week, yeah. my weekdays. Y'all pray for me. Pray for my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's Speaking like, about I jobs, <laughs> Mike, you want to talk about what, what well, happened to us? Yeah, our super, my, well, I and Julius had different supervisors, but my supervisor, like, pulled me off to the side. I'm like, I'm getting fired. <laughs> but nope, I got a raise, and I'm super blessed about that. Making more money. Money, money, money. Look, look at that. Look at that. Money, you, money, money, ready? money. <laughs> see, see money. y'all talking about money. I'm trying to get hired on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My week at work was at work too. I got like a new position. Got $25. I mean, not $25, <laughs> but $0.25 cent raise. Yeah, and then also, <laughs> we beat a, um, we broke another record mm-hmm. because um, we made $1 million in one month. And so mm-hmm. what happened was I got a raise too, yeah. but we couldn't t- talk about it. So, so well, you know, just be private about it. I'm just saying my plant got made $2 million. So Julius, you got to yeah. bump up. Hey, our plant, no, they bought us pizza for lunch. Hey, I got pizza last Friday. Yeah. 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 I mm-hmm. ate too much. Say that. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. Hey, what's that supposed to be, man? <laughs> Put me under the bus. This, this is LSU the bus be the interpreter of that. Hey, hey, it's okay. I can be Hit fat. Hit be made fat. Hey, gluttony, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I, I, I want to y'all, how y'all viewers at, uh, listen to y'all. Right? I'm telling you. And I'm one of them. Y'all crazy. Y'all, y'all just, y'all argue off the phone. Like, uh, y'all argue on the phone. Like, I see... I, if the views are watching, I see the totally different side of them. Like when they mm. argue, they argue, and it's hilarious. Like I'm telling you, it's like you can make a show out of these guys. Hey, hey, it, so funny. It's like yeah. two cats fighting, man. <laughs> like what TV show they're gonna watch? Is it the birds yeah. or is it the mice? Julie, Julie, be able to say, "I'm for the yeah, 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 yeah. trying to be playing devil's advocate." Come on now, <laughs> yeah. dude. Isaiah would crack me up, man. Oh man. But anyway. Oh, yeah, man. Let's just get right into it. Yeah, let's get serious. Who is Isaiah Mm. Johnson? And who is his better second Mm. half? Who is Mm. Isaiah Johnson? Yeah, who is Isaiah Johnson now? So who is he who you're looking at? (laughs) Wow! I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. (laughs) Well, basically, uh, uh, let me just start off with Lowry. Uh, Lowry, if you want to, you know. (laughs) Just make good to it, man. (laughs) No, I'm not Isaiah, but okay. <laughs> I'm Val. Um, I just recently moved to Texas from out of state, and uh, I met Isaiah online, but we kind of share a testimony together. So. Okay. Well, my name is Isaiah. Basically, um, 
Uh, I always, I was born and raised in Texas. I always will be born in, well, I can't always. Yeah. Be born, <laughs> well, you can be made. I, I can tell you from Texas. I can be born again spiritually. Mm-hmm. In but, Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in Texas. But no, like, my name is Isaiah. Uh, basically, um, um, who am I? Is basically like a guy that over 16 year old got saved, uh, said, put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, got saved by uh, through the bus ministry at our church, and mm-hmm. God just began to bless me throughout the course of time, like over the 16 years. Um, uh, ended up being blessed to uh, 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 God ended up using me and putting stuff on my heart and started stuff and like years of the faith. Ended up uh, being called to preach at a young yeah. age, and God yeah. blessed me with that. And uh, last year I got off to preach, but I don't know if those offers are still on the table, <laughs> but. <laughs> But yeah, like that's who I am. Um, I was raised in a home that, you know, a single parent home. Um, my mother did the best she could to raise me and my brother. Uh, ended up getting bedridden uh, with MS and stuff like that. And so, mm-hmm. just throughout the course of time, like she took care, of, it took care of us, and now, so now we take care of her now. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, mm-hmm. God just been good to us. You know, even though we may not want things to happen a certain way, but you know, God just continued to keep blessing us over time. So. Yeah. Amen. Oh, man, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah. I know Isaiah that we are not going to agree on everything, but there's one thing that yes. I know that we all can agree on is the fundamentals of the faith and how like how how mm-hmm. loving our God truly is and like Amen. a lot of times like we we portray God as this unloving God when in fact that's not who he is. I mean, he sent his own right. son to die. Like tomorrow is Easter. Like, this is a time to take place. So um, I think one thing that I would ask is, like, I we got to know each other after the crazy um, things that happened in the recent years. So you want to talk, recent days, I should say. You want to talk more about that? Well, how? Perhaps uh, more of, like, the, the racism. Um, oh, like, on the post? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. You're going to go there well, tonight. Uh, well, basically, um, I'm going to be blunt i'm gonna be open um this is the first time i'm ever coming on and social media talking about the the backstory of everything that has happened uh with that post mm-hmm. uh i made a post some like three or four months ago on social media talking about i'm tired of racism this the racial prejudice that's going on inside the independent fundamental baptist um a couple people that i knew personally uh took the post personal and uh, they took it to a part where, to the point to where they try to kind of basically said, if you don't apologize for what you said and apologize for what you put on social media, then we're going to take you out of ministry at my home church. And mind you, I rode the bus over 16 years, got saved through the bus ministry, like I said. And for the first time, because I didn't want to bow down to what they were trying to make me apologize on, and I didn't want to compromise on what my stance was. Uh, I told them, like, I, you know, I'm not your dog and I'm not your puppy. And mm-hmm. they they didn't like that. And they took mm-hmm. me out of ministry for that, that week, that one week. I didn't wasn't kept out of ministry forever. But that one week they kept, they took me out of ministry. And then uh, that, I think it was that Tuesday that came around. I had a meeting with my pastor and the guy that led me to the Lord over 16 years ago. We sat down and talked. It wasn't a bad meeting. It was a, mm-hmm. a meeting that I felt that needed to be done. Uh, and we re- rehashed out our, our differences. And I told him, I said, look, I'm not compromising on doctrine. I'm not compromising on the mm-hmm. Bible. Uh, I still stand on that. I said, this is just a personal opinion that I see that has been neglected for so many years. Mm-hmm. I told him that, you know, when it comes down to bus kids and stuff like that, we, we when it comes down to like, when we talk about racism and prejudice and stuff, it's more about well, we pick up bus kids. We pick up predominantly black kids and stuff like that. I said, but how many of those yeah. kids are staying at church? Mm-hmm. And so I told him, I said, if we're going to try to use these bus kids as a, as a way of trying to, as a token, the the make our numbers up instead of mm-hmm. trying to get them to grow spiritually. And I, as I mean by spiritual, you know, all of us just filthy sinners saved mm-hmm. by grace. Amen. You know, we don't deserve yeah, God's preach. mercy. We don't deserve God's grace. But, um, you know, just to help them grow in Christ and help them to get closer to God. And, you know, we I feel like a lot of things that we have neglected inside the IFB is discipleship. And it's just mm-hmm. lacking yep. just throughout the course of time. And it's like, it's sad to see that we have a bus ministry that picks up hundreds of kids, 
but mm-hmm. those hundreds of kids are not even trying to stay. They're not even staying inside church. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's interesting that you say yeah. that because, like, um, like when we think about like the, like one discipleship, but also when um church discipline, it seems like it's completely gone out the wi- the window. Well, we would do do with all these things privately when. A lot of the time, these things need to be done publicly. Um, but Valerie, I guess I'll ask you this question: Like, what was your reaction when all this stuff was taking place with Isaiah in Isaiah's life? Um, not many people really. A lot of people were ignorant mm-hmm. to the whole situation. They lacked knowledge, and so uh, me coming from like a legalistic background and stuff. And not only that, but morals um, towards another human, um, whether they're yellow, black, or white, they're all precious in his sight, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I stand with him, and I know it kind of got a little heated, I guess, but Mm. I'm not going to let other people uh, think for me, Mm. you know, I'm going to stand for it for him whether no matter who it is because that's morally right even in god's eyes yeah i have a question for you both obviously you know our podcast is called a bunch of christian kid podcast and pretty much you know seeing christianity through the lenses of you know of a bus kid or a christian kid that grew up in church his whole life so i mean you started going to the church you didn't know much but let's just say later down in life, which you guys are at now right now, is knowing what you know now, h- how do you see the church, <clears throat> my bad, <clears throat> treating bus kids? You know, are they supposed to be treating bus kids, you know, right? I'm like, or biblically in a loving way? Or do you think that the church treats, you know, bus kids as a second class citizen? Um. I can answer that. Uh, when I was younger and growing up in the bus ministry and stuff like that and riding the bus and stuff, I thank God that I had people that invested their time in me, invested mm-hmm. their, their time in me. But I think I, I don't take that for granted, and I'm not trying to discredit what they have done for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think that they pick and choose. Because I always hear this. It's like, well, only if 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 the bus kid is like, it's a certain kid that you see that's growing spiritually in Christ then bring to Sunday night service and stuff like that. And it's like they pick and choose who they see that's growing spiritually. But it's like, you know, a regular church kid can be looked apart, act apart, have this mm-hmm. image that you mm-hmm. want them to be. But behind doors, they may be a totally different person. Yeah. And so, like, I never understood that why would you try to pick and choose bus kids like, well, I see this kid, he's a good kid, he's spiritual, he's growing in Christ and stuff. No, because you see this image that you want them to be. Mm-hmm. But it's like you don't see the 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 side the other side of them. You know, the Bible is clear. It says, you know, man looks what's on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Mm-hmm. You know, some yeah. of these kids, yeah. you know, they may not look the the way that you want them to look, but on the inside, maybe that's what God wants them to be. Maybe they have a huge heart for mm-hmm. Christ. And you never probably never you probably never know because you don't see their heart. And so Word. it it I believe that what I have seen in the bus ministry, and don't get me wrong, I believe there's good people that works in the bus ministry and stuff like that. But what I have seen throughout the course of the time, I have seen people pick and choose bus kids like we're gonna we're gonna work with the good ones and mm-hmm. the ones that are kind of still struggling, we just gonna let them, you know, let them be and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I know y'all know James and stuff like that. James said it, the best way I, I, I can address it is, you know. It's like a kid that's in school that's struggling. I'm not going to throw the kid that's struggling and just leave him alone and focus on the ones that are like pro- like progressing yep. and doing yep. good. Yeah. I'm going to focus on the one that's struggling. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we lack in that. It's like we pick and choose that, hey, this is the easy route to take. We're going to work on the kids that are like growing in Christ. And we're just going to leave the kids that are not growing. We're just not going to really focus on them that much. We're not going to let them go to youth conference. We're not going to let them go to camp. Or we're not going to let them go Sunday night service or Wednesday night service. And I never understood that. And that really aggravated me. And what hurt me the most is that I had opportunity to grow close to Christ and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I had opportunity to have people invest in my life. I know one of the rules at our church is that uh, for a bus kid, it's like, 
if you want the bus kid to become a member, you have to have their parents come to church also. I never mm-hmm. understood that because there's a small percent of those parents that are going to come to church. Quite frankly, they can care. I ain't saying all parents are like this, but some of those parents, they can care less about where the kid is at at the end of the day. Right. Mm-hmm. So just, it, that's just, I never understood that. I never, I never got that. So mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I was to say that's interesting. Yeah. A lot of times, like, we since we always judge on the outward appearance like if they if they aren't like dressing like how we think that they should dress oh they're not right with god Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. like like we say like i mean like what did jesus do like jesus loved on the people that were the ones that were the most broken hearted and he saved them them free from their it's almost right it's almost like we want the bus kids to be like five or ten years experience in church Mm-hmm. And be saved mm-hmm. and everything before they even got saved. Yep. And, and that's yeah, the same I, level of spirituality. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I never got that. Like I like it it aggravates me that they actually they do that. And it's like I always like now being in leadership and like mm-hmm. now like being in a junior church and stuff like that. I, I don't have leverage on what I should say or do, but I kind of like mention to them is like, hey, you know. Y'all, y'all expect these kids to come hit the church like they're holy now and spiritual, but they've been in the world for seven days majority, like the whole entire week. Mm-hmm. And yeah. well, basically seven days a week, and then out of two hours, you expect them to come to church like spiritual and holy down and perfect. It's like the the big the big chances of that is like it's a small percentage mm-hmm. of that ever happening. Now you know you can like train them and teach them how to obey uh, uh, authority and obey rules and stuff like that and i believe that you know you ought to set those standards and those rules in place mm-hmm. but for some time it's like this they just want to you know you got to be this and if you're not like this we're just going to get ready and kick you off the bus i'm like oh come on now mm-hmm. it's just yeah. not right I have another question is for you so you, i know you're a, a bus kid and you're working with bus kids now, giving back to what God has given you. But what are some of the, the things that, that you see Christian, I guess, kids, workers, working with the bus kids th- that they don't understand? I guess I don't understand. Like, you understand, my bad. <laughs> I'm trying to get my <laughs> You gotta, to, you gotta to re- say that again because I didn't yeah. you come from. My bad. You gotta... Uh, brain freeze or something. <laughs> yeah, it was a long day, guys. I'm sorry. So my question was, what are some things that Christian kids that grew up in church don't understand about bus kids? It's like, what... With you being on staff... I'm sorry. Man. He's lagging a little bit. I, I have a birthday. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Thing. Super tired and what my did, voice is messing what, up. What did you take before what did you take before you got on, on this podcast? <laughs> Dude, I had um a little bit of social I had drinking nothing to eat all day. So <laughs> is it based with social drinking? Hmm? Yeah, we, we, we had communion on Thursday. Oh yeah, we did have communion. I think I too much wine. <laughs> Still hung over. <laughs> Oh, uh, I, okay, I think it's a good thing we go right into some. No, we ain't but, it out. You know, my question is, oh, my God, <laughs> is that, what are some things that you can tell a Christian worker that work on the church can help better reach the bus kids? Well, one of the biggest things that I, I would say um, is show more grace on these kids. Mm-hmm. Show them love and compassion. I I I I think a lot of Christian kids never was evolved around that environment because most of those parents sheltered them. And you know, that's not bad that they sheltered them from the world and stuff like that. My mama my mother always taught me this. She always taught me, you know, right from wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, a yep. majority of Christian Christian church kids, like they always been taught what is right, but never showed them what is wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like they kept them from that. It's like they were sheltered from it. And the reason I know that because I, I went to Bible college and I saw a majority of them that was sheltered and they just, mm-hmm. they didn't know any lick of the world. So they were just shunned from it. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I would tell them like, you know, don't expect the same 
the same mindset as a regular church kid that grew up in church their whole entire life. Don't expect that from a uh, bus kid. Just show them love and compassion. I believe you got to show more grace on bus kids than you show on just regular church mm-hmm. kids just because those church, those bus kids, they, like I said, they were raised in the world 24-7. They around it. They yep. evolved around it. So that's just my my take on that. Wow. Do you yeah. think there's some ignorance comes into play? Say that again? Do you think some ignorance comes to play? <laughs> My oh, no, mic is back in. I think you're lagging. Like, yeah. No, okay. Fine. Stupid or not. I just got my internet already fixed it. Like, you over here, your internet is struggling. I know, bro. The struggle bus is way over, guys. But anyway, yes. so, like, he, what he was saying is, do you think that, that ignorance comes into play in these situations? Uh, yes, I do. I think it's a lack of knowledge. I do think that. I think. Um, I, I think a lot of bus workers. I, I would say this: the majority of bus workers that have been in the bus ministry for years, mm-hmm. they see it and they know how to work with those type of situations. But then you got those new ones that's coming on the scene. They never was taught how to work with bus kids. Mm-hmm. It's like they were put inside the ministry. Now I don't know how y'all churches. I don't know how other churches are. It may be different and stuff like that. So I can't mm-hmm. speak for their church. But what I have noticed is like there's a lack of training in how you should approach bus kids and how you should treat bus kids and stuff like that. It's more like you got to It's like they come in there. It's like they expect these bus kids to be like a Christian kid. So that's that's a kind of annoying. But I have to work with some some of the bus workers and like tell them like, hey, you know, you got to, you know. Got lay off a little bit, yeah. Yeah, lay off a little bit. I ain't trying to say like they can't, they shouldn't abide by the rules, but you know, you got to show some grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I think I think the problem is a lot of time is the relationship aspect of it is kind of been eliminated to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So tell us your story and how you guys met. I guess we'll go there. How we got? Okay. So, <laughs> Julius, is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, so. Back. But okay, so how we met? We met through Instagram. Um, basically, she was following Demarcus, and I thought like normally I follow people that follow that I'm acquainted with, and so I followed her and stuff like that. And really, God put it on my heart to mm-hmm. say, "Hey, I just want to let you know I'm praying for you." Like I do that with a lot of people and stuff like that. But then, like it just turned into like something more than just, "Hey, I'm just praying for you." God's nugging you, like saying, "Hey." She's mm-hmm. a one brother. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's how it was like for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, like that's how we got acquainted with each other, just through the means of Instagram and then like we ended up talking more in the video chatting. Um I took trips out of there like two or three times. Five. Five times, yeah. Five Man, times. She's got the count. Took airplane trip. Yeah, oh, yeah. airplane trip. Mm-hmm. Drove back and forth there. We went to Colorado together and that was the first time I ever like took like a big old trip. Plus, you know, um, I was put on furlough, so I, I had the money, you know, unemployment, praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so Amen. I had the money to do the, all that and stuff like that. And nobody, and like the crazy thing about it, nobody knew that we were like together. Because mm-hmm. I kind of kept on down. And it was just, it wasn't because I was ashamed of her. Yeah. It was Better just not really be. Like, it yeah. was just really she'll, because. She'll kill was, you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really because like. I knew how church people are, and I knew mm-hmm. how they were going to react. Mom and, preach. Mm-hmm. and plus, like they, like at that time, like she was still in Pentecost, but she was questioning. So I didn't want to like tell them anything because you know how they think they hope be not even yep. but non-believers. But it's kind of like especially if he's a Pentecostal too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ooh, boy, yeah. You going to hell too? Yeah. But plus on top of that too, like. I already knew, like, they, they can say that, but it's like, no, mm-hmm. but y'all try to use that word, be nice, be open, non-believers with, like, the mm-hmm. color of my skin. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. I can, at that point, like, I didn't even care about how the way they felt about me finding someone outside the church, because it's like, mm-hmm. I knew from the get-go, it was like, I would never find somebody inside this church. Mm-hmm. It was just, yeah, right. just not going to happen. It's Facts. just because, like, y'all are, like, so pushed on, like, well, if they don't look like you, or if their Ooh, culture yep. is different, Mm-hmm. you shouldn't yep. be with it and stuff like that and i'm like mm-hmm. you know what i'm done if y'all want to continue being like that when i find somebody yeah. outside this church don't come up to me then don't, <laughs> don't tell me anything now because like all right found somebody don't don't try yeah. to worry about my relationship. Amen. 
So yeah. that's how it was for me. Amen. That was good. Well, so, so what's I, your side, Valerie? Go for it, man. Huh? Yeah. What's your side? Well, so I was following Demarcus, right? I didn't mm-hmm. really know him. It was just someone I came across on Instagram. And then Isaiah popped up um, in my DMs. And we'll get uh, thirsty. Julius, man, you gotta make it too funny. We're serious mode. Yeah, let's get serious. Uh. Um. <laughs> Come on, baby, I gotta get serious on this. <laughs> um. So anyway, he popped up in my DMs, right? And. <laughs> Come on, yeah. We live. We live. We live on, on YouTube. Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay. You get serious. She's too high. over there drinking that gittery. <laughs> oh, man. You've been drinking, you've been drinking on that alcohol, haven't you? <laughs> oh, man. I'm quiet. It's okay, man. Okay, <laughs> I'll be here for you, man. Stop drinking that night cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Go ahead, babe. Let him laugh. <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Oh yeah. Oh, you're you're drunk, hit her. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he popped up in my DMs and uh, he said God laid um God laid me on his heart and stuff and mm-hmm. uh, pretty much from there we started talking and Mm -hmm. um we knew we had like differences and um one thing i learned is god can turn any difference into uh, his direction and so i grew up in a lordship legalistic background and he didn't know i was questioning because you know if i was questioning i just taught oh i'm going to hell so i couldn't tell nobody that i was questioning i had to pretend to be this image and stuff and uh anyway we went back and forth and it, it was kind of hard because we had some values that we went through um personally that yeah. was just uh cycles pretty much and then eventually i was i heard i heard somewhat of the gospel but i couldn't comprehend it right mm-hmm. and so um I came to knowledge, like, I need to get saved, and I didn't know how, but uh, I texted him at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning, and I said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I've been holding on for too long. Like, I need to let go. I need to get saved. So he led me to the Lord, and uh, ever since then, you know, I came to Texas, and I'm attending church. I got baptized. Uh, I came out of legalism for probably 16, 15 years, probably longer. And you know, I've been attending Trinity it's Church okay. Okay. for <laughs> I've been attending church for uh around like four months now, so awesome. Yeah. I guess uh yeah. talk what more was you guys <clears throat> oh, I'll let you go, my bad, Michael. Oh no, you're fine, man. I guess talk more about um uh what was it like being a Pentecostal, I guess. I think I'm super interested. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you want to like know my background or just all of the above? Just grew up? All of the above. So, you know, I was literally raised from like right after a few weeks I was born, I was like straight up put into the Pentecostal church. I started at UPCI, United Pentecostal International. It's a big, gigantic movement. Like, it's a big cult. And then I went into uh, Assemblies of God, like Apostolic, and then into a non-denominational church. Well, um, being born and raised in a uh, UPC church, uh, very legalistic, um, also spiritual, spiritual abuse mm-hmm. as well. Um, at a very young age, uh, five years old I was having thoughts and imaginations of like 
of hell, of me burning in hell, you know, no little girl should have to ever experience that. Even a little wow. boy, like, no, no little kid should have to even be told, you're not good enough, you're going to hell. But, you know, I was caught up in the world, I was caught up in sinning at a very, very young age. And then, I guess I had a conviction. And I was never taught, the like, I was taught, you know, Jesus died for you, but not like the reason why he died for me. Mm -hmm. I was never taught like the true gospel. Mm -hmm. And so one time, you know, I was going up to the altar and, you know, their doctrine is be Acts 2.38, be baptized and speak in tongues. And mm -hmm. if you're really mm -hmm. saved, it'll show by your fruits or by you speaking in tongues. And then, uh, so I went up to the altar one time, right? And I didn't, speak in tongues or whatever and I saw the pastor of the church look at the youth pastor and said she didn't make it saying I'm going to hell right and so I was like broken and so I just they scooted me along and I hadn't as I got older I started drifting away from church and I was searching but I was really living for the world so um I started having an outlook like God hated me I was, instead of looking at the church, their, like, their holiness standards, their legalistic, just cult movement, I was yeah. looking at God mm -hmm. instead. I had an image, like, God hated wow. me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I it got so bad to where I didn't want nothing to do with God. And wow, there's, there is, it was actually going on for years that I couldn't even sleep at night because I was so afraid of going to hell. I, and for my whole life, I was, I knew I was missing something, but I didn't know what it was. I couldn't even comprehend it. And then until recently, I found out it was the gospel. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, wow. recently, I came out, like, you know, around that time, I was in my teenage years. and mm -hmm. um, But recently, when I, the church I came out of was a non-denominational church. And uh, I got led by the Lord, by uh you know isaiah and uh, Amen. maybe two others mm -hmm. and but after that or before that was very very rough it was a mm -hmm. lot of cycling back and forth and because i was trying to hold on to something i was taught you if you question if you even wow say believe this believe that you're going to hell uh, sounds like so somebody I was, that i know mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very, very controlling, and I didn't know what to do. I wanted it so bad, and Isaiah didn't know, and well, uh -huh. I couldn't tell him, <clears throat> and so, because I was going to go to hell in my mind, so I kept up the image, and um, and then one night, I heard a sermon by a Southern Baptist, and it was he was talking about a, his, uh, a person's mind becoming so seared to where you know, God chastised you, and to where you, you're too late. Tell him who it was. It Tell was him who C.T. Town, Townsend. Oh. Ooh. And Amen. so I heard, a, I heard a message by him, and he was talking about how your mind becomes seared, and I realized, like, this may be my last chance to get the gospel. Mm. And so I started, like, I was losing it, and so I was like, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And then I heard... uh new apostolic reformation a cult a boy that started this new movement and he was speaking on this ugh, doctrine that's just <laughs> not biblical and then another boy that is a baptist he believes in uh, eternal security he was pretty much preaching or not preaching teaching out of the pauline epistles and mm -hmm. the gospel and i was like wow what is this and when i when i heard the a Baptist boy teaching I heard the scriptures but it's like mentally I couldn't grasp it and that became scary to me because if you can't grasp simple simple childlike mm -hmm. things it's like yeah. you're running out of time and I knew that night if I didn't do something it would have been my last mm -hmm. time I just know wow. that for a fact I was so committed yeah. so yeah. I I texted Isaiah at like four o'clock five o'clock in the morning and I said, I'm not a Pentecostal anymore. I can't do this. And then uh, I said, I need to talk to your preacher and I need to talk to his friend. And so 
uh, Isaiah gave me a little bit of the gospel, and then uh, we FaceTimed with a few others, and it took about a few hours because mm-hmm. I had question after questions, you know, being raised up. And and that's okay. Yeah. I wanted answers. And so at the end of the night, after about five hours maybe, um, Isaiah gave a little bit of the gospel, and then uh, right after the phone call, uh, I got saved. Amen. And then ever since then, um, I I just, you know, been living that new life of being saved. And then, But before I came up here, I started leave our, I was getting ready to come up here from New Mexico because that's where I came from. Mm. The, I was saying goodbye to my former church. I wasn't trying to attend it. I was just, tra- uh, just trying to say goodbye, my goodbyes, right? Mm-hmm. And it was a non-denominational church, right? And so I went to say my goodbyes and the, sorry, the pastor mm. uh, kind of called me out in front of everybody mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. why they were leaving. And I knew biblically to do it privately. I learned a lot right when I got saved. I just learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to talk to him publicly, but it's like he kept on and on and on to where I was was like, I can either tell him the gospel. And I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was like, I've never done it before. I I just got saved. And so I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. So I, uh, I started reading out of Romans and he started he asked where, what church or what Bible college I wanted to go to. I said, I told him which one, which Baptist college I wanted to go to. He started saying that that deno- denomination is the worst denomination. Mm-hmm. It's going to send you to hell. It's going to send. It sent about almost everybody to hell who wow. believes in. Yeah, he straight up said that right out of his mouth. It's like he yelled it out too. Um, he tried to intimidate me with that, and I started reading out of Romans, the gospel. Mm. Amen. So I read Amen. Up on the- shall be saved and right when i opened to it he grabbed my bible and he ripped it out of my hand what wow he scared this healer the truth man that's what i'm saying yeah it was that's crazy yeah i I, I ought to knock him out (laughs) yeah (laughs) hey i do i'm not trying to uh, skip over you valerie but i really believe that god brought you two together and with that being said I said, are you positive you are? Are you on my RIP recovery phone list? Are you sure? Look at him. I know it's coming from the list. Look, this is what I say about them. I'll say this. Okay. It's some of y'all independent from the Baptist. Y'all going y'all gonna to see I'm done. He, he can't preach at my church. Y'all already, y'all already wrote me off years ago. Trust me. You wrote me off whenever I posted that post, so it's fine. But... I'll say this. I'll rock with recovering fundamentals when it comes down to sexual abuse and when it comes down to lordship. Mm-hmm. I'll rock with them with that. The same thing I'll rock with them with uh, I'll rock with uh, Preacher Boy's podcast. Mm-hmm. I'll rock with him yeah. when it comes down to sexual abuse. Yeah. Right now, the theology and their, and their whole way of trying to compromise on the King James Bible and some of them are reformed and reforming their theology and some of them uh, they're Calvinists and some of them read from the ESV uh, mm-hmm. and they try to you, they try to do some of all that type of stuff look here I'm sticking with my King James Bible Amen. And, um, hey I'm King James I, and I'm just going to stick with that I, I'm not going to call myself recovering for a minute because this is what I believe why would I go from a mo- from a IFB movement to a recovering from a minute that doesn't stand doctrine on where I stand I like that's just like that's like I'm going to a totally different religion in a way, yeah. And, and, and let's just be honest, like recovering from the minimalist, like Phil Kidd said it on, on the podcast. He said in 50 or 80 years, he said, people gonna be talking bad about y'all. They're gonna be talking yeah. bad about your doctrine and stuff like that. He said, you know, so you know, you gotta look at that too. You know, yeah. do I think I do think the IFB do need to humble themselves Hold it down. and open their eyes. Yeah, and like humble themselves and open their eyes and realize that hey, there's some things that y'all been trying to shun it under the road for years, and this is why it's dying out yeah you know so you know that's just my opinion Amen. yeah my um, philosophy I ain't no is, like i don't <laughs> mind uh bashing the ip because there's some areas in the ip that you have to bash i'm well, just I'll saying say for what it is exactly i mean exactly that's the problem like the control some of the control that happens it's pretty yep. it's leadership pretty, ooh, it's pretty I mean, right, let me ask you this uh, go let me it. ask you this i think here's the thing we know we 
a lot of things are coming out in the open on the on oh, yeah. the, the on Baptist. Things are getting like called out. It's getting exposed and stuff like that. But there's a lot of us young people our age that mm-hmm. see it. And it's like I don't want to be like that older generation. I don't want to be like that middle generation that's covering the stuff up. I want to mm-hmm. be better than better than them. I, I y'all may disagree with me. I feel like there is restoration in the IFB, mm-hmm. and the reason why I say that is because there's young people are coming out and they're saying like, no, we're gonna do it this way. We're gonna do it the Bible way. You know, y'all covering yeah. up the corruption and mm-hmm. stuff like that. It's gonna lead to destruction, and the only thing it's doing is turning the call to Christ at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. if you don't if you don't want all this stuff to be happening, then don't cover it up. Take it to mm-hmm. the authorities. You know, and it yeah. irritates me every time. <clears throat> That meeting I had with my pastor and the guy that led me to the Lord over 16 years ago, like three or four months ago, I talked to him about some of the stuff and I talked to him about the whole interracial marriage thing. And it, it and it bugs me when they sit there and try to say, Well, we're not, we 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 don't, we we're not, we're not a part of that church. But you let these guys preach at your church though. Yep. Mm-hmm. Y'all say y'all independent, but y'all allowed them to preach at y'all's church though at conferences. You preaching now. You know, youth conferences, you know, camps and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Y'all show shit with each other. It's like how y'all Those call standards. yourself if you're shut with everybody else? So it's like, pick which one. You know, if you're really yeah. independent, you be independent within your local church. Not, and not having clicks. Everybody else. Yeah, exactly. It, so that irritates mm-hmm. me. They try to, they try to, they try to sit there and just try to. Well, we we're not we're not with the Southwest Baptist Association. We're not with them. We're not with the Show of the Lord. But y'all let these guys preach at your church though. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> Valerie, I have another question for you. Yeah. So you just talk about legalism a lot and experience it. Would you say that that some of the IFB crowd is kind of like your Pentecostal church? So, you know, I don't proclaim myself to be a, a recovering nor a IFB. I'm a dispensationalist. I believe in 2 like Timothy 2.15, rightfully divide the word of truth. But he already knew. I already know he was gonna do that. <laughs> hey, Dale, you need to start listening to your girlfriend a lot more. A lot more. I think, she, like you said before, she's more knowledgeable than you. <laughs> but. Um... <coughs> You know, the church I do attend is IFB, but what I do see is, um, I, I do see a lot of standards coming from a legalistic background and lordship. We call it holiness standards. You know, I see the Ooh. same thing mm-hmm. inside uh, the IFB. I don't proclaim myself to be an IFB, though. I'm a yeah. dispensationalist, Bible believer. That's it. Mm-hmm. But what I do Dude. see is... <laughs> What I do see is, right. is, you know, people recovering from the IFB, but, uh, you know, <laughs> when there's a cult or a movement going on, mm-hmm. and you're recovering from it, and but you're also, you know, tying in, like, in my point of view, if you're changing the Word of God, you're changing everything. Everything is found by the Word of God. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, if, you know... Um, I don't care. What I see is, I, you know, I pre- she's, she, she's preaching. Amen. With the, with the recovering and with the IFB, I see one cold, but I see recovery. <clears throat> and then I see, you know, <laughs> everything turning into another movement. Yeah, for sure. You know, my point of view is like, if you want to reach people, especially your generation, mm-hmm. why start another movement? Why not just reach them? Why don't you know, God why, said go to the world? Why don't we just preach why not Jesus? Be Bible believers? Why don't we just preach Jesus that He can save you from your sins and not preach all of His Amen. All, all of His other crap? Sorry. Yeah, just preach Christ. Sorry. I'm wow. Sorry. I'm getting you to... uh, No, do we? Okay, I'm, sorry. I'm not trying to overreact. I'm not trying to overreact. But today, <laughs> for like the hundred and fifty <laughs> time, I told my pastor, "You do not have to be an IFB." To be a born again Bible believer in Christ. Yeah. No, I was like, tell you the truth, when you stand before God, we're going to be judged according to how much we follow his bird. I'm not bird, but his bird. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Uh, but he's saying that no people would say that if you're not independent fundamentalist or you don't use the King James Bible, because I'm all for the King James Bible and, and I'm all for the IFB if they follow the Bible. Because at yeah. the end of the day, we're our Bible believers, you know, and the Bible believer, if you believe that, you know, it makes you a you know, Bible believing Christian, not mm-hmm. IFB. The Baptists do not make us Bible believers. I, you know, believing the Bible make you a Bible believer. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Hey, 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 hey. I got a gooder. I got a gooder. <laughs> I got a gooder. And I told y'all she was good. I told y'all she knew about more than me. <laughs> but no, yeah. man, like, I, I agree with her. I agree with her with that. Dude, it's just, yeah, you need to agree with her a lot more. <laughs> I, I, it, when it comes down to me being a part of IFB, you know, I have to agree with the fact that, you know, I'm only going to stand with what the Bible says, you know. Now, mm-hmm. they, like I said, a bunch of these people, they probably wrote me off. I know, oh, I got to tell y'all this, just Ooh, like fun. you talked about my Ooh, situation. And, um, so after, since after I made that post, there was mm-hmm. like, and I got kicked out of ministry for like a week. It was a mm-hmm. guy, church. it's kind of a funny story. It was a guy inside the church going around telling people like, Oh, he got banned from the church. He he he's never gonna come back here to the to to the church and, and stuff like that. And so, uh, I let it slide and stuff like that. The funny thing about it, that Sunday I went to church and he saw me. He took a picture of me while walking to the auditorium. I'm like, you like, come on, that's weird. But like, he <laughs> took a picture of me while I walked to the auditorium. And said, he, look, he didn't. He was not supposed to be here. Look, he's here. He he's banned from the church. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like chill. So then Super it got petty. worse. Yeah, and then it got worse. And then it got to the point where he was just fully going around like spreading lies on my name and stuff like that. So I, you know, like like the guy that led me to the Lord told me, well, instead of trying to post it on social media, you should go up to them and talk to them in private. Mind you, that post that I post on social media was a broad statement. It wasn't talking about a specific person. It was a broad yep. statement. It was a help. It was they took to it help. Per- yeah. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to help, but they took it personal mm-hmm. because you know yeah. they, they, they got to spend on purpose. It. Yeah, yeah, they 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 wearing some. They ain't wearing no manly draws. They wearing some, you know. But I, I'm just gonna <laughs> say that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They uh, some of them took a person, so they were. He was going around like it was getting worse, and so I said, you know, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take his. I'm gonna take his advice. Mm. So I'm talking private. So I, I got his number. And I called him. I said, I texted him. I said, I texted him through messenger and stuff like. That. I didn't have his number. He told me to call him. I told him. I said, hey, I would like to have a meeting with you mm-hmm. on Sunday and stuff like that. Okay, and so he said, what is the about? I said, well, I would like to talk to you with Brother Joplin and stuff like that. Because mind you, I already said this yeah. to Kick that out. <laughs> okay. Take that out. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> God help us. Well, okay. <laughs> Just block it. Just black that out. Just beep. <laughs> Sorry about your editing, uh, Mike. <laughs> I wasn't but, supposed uh... to edit this one, man. Well, <laughs> thanks. So hey, just keep going, keep going. It's good. Oh, well, it's good. So basically, um, I saw I'm gonna have me with him with, uh, with one of the guys inside the church and stuff. And so basically, he said, "Okay, all right, uh, we'll do Sunday night." So Sunday night came around. I went up to him and talked to him and said, "Hey, are we gonna have a meeting?" Well, no, I gotta work uh, tomorrow morning and stuff, and so I ain't gonna have time to have that meeting. So I went to Brom that night. I said, okay, whatever. So I went to Brom that night. And then I get home. Mm-hmm. And I saw this text message. And I, matter of fact, I'm going to read this text message to y'all. I got to read it. I got to read it verbatimly. And y'all going to have to see how I, I got to be petty. <laughs> y'all know how I'm petty. I got to be petty on him. Petty Johnson. I got to be petty. Petty I mean, Johnson. Let me, let, me, let me go on here real quick. Be like, bye, Felissa. <laughs> Dude, okay, he's, he's in That's the boat. Yeah. He said, he said, sorry I couldn't talk tonight, but it seems to me you're quite unsure of your of yourself. And you want things to be racial based thing. Uh you want things to racial based things, and it's not it. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything you have to say, period. I ha- I don't really listen to you at all anyway. You haven't earned my re- uh, have you haven't earned any respect from me. I do my job, which is this: make sure 
people are there to listen and obey from the word of God. We, and plus, the funny thing about it, when he said the word, when he said God, he had the lowercase g, so I knew it wasn't of God. But <laughs> took off. Not to fight, not to fight and be disruptive. When you let kids run over you, it, it doesn't help anything. I understand the grace issue, but sometimes tough love is what they need. They will listen to you a little better when you get their attention on a higher level. When you set low expectations for kids, you get a mess. When you get run over like nothing else, what did uh, what did I walk into today? No control. Basically, he was talking about that, that Sunday witchy team. We were going to get into that in a minute. No control of any of your bus kids, hardly at all. I didn't have to say a word at all. I don't. I, I know how things are with bus kids because I was one of them. I was one at, at one time. Trust me, I've seen the worst and the best of bu uh, bus kids. I ran quite a bit. I, I, ran, I ran quite a bit of routes, bus routes in my time and sent home plenty of kids during the tincture, the tincture or uh, I guess as captain and runner and everything in between. So here's what I adjust. From here on out, stay away from me, and I will stay away from you. I don't like you anyway. Sorry, I'm not racist, but I can't stand to listen to someone be so controversial about our Baptist mm -hmm. heritage or anything else. Mm. And I shot back to him. I said, first off, brother, I'm not about to come on here and explain myself through tick. But one thing I will say, mind your business when it comes down to my bus kids. And the final and and finally, you are not in that department, so leave it alone. Hey, I said, and I in order to get respect, uh, you have to give respect. So the same goes to you. And then I said, <laughs> you can take it or leave it. And I still want that meeting. <laughs> yeah. Lump it, thump it or put it in your pocket. Need to read but it, but he, said, he said we never we never had that meeting. He 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 was a coward, and you know he was yeah. like I said he, he. I don't want to talk bad about his wife or anything. You know they, they, <laughs> they good people love the Lord. Yeah. You know, I love yeah, the Lord. Amen. I think he, we're called he to be unified, a unified body. Yeah. That doesn't sound unified mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, he man. Like, he, he don't have to like me though, but it is what it is though. You know yeah. that's, that's that's just him. I ain't gonna. Anyway. I yeah. <laughs> so my question when closing out. Oh yes. What would you tell people who are listening to the, our podcast? What would be your advice to them when it comes to bus kids, when it comes to legalism? Anything. When it comes yeah, anything. So what I will say, and it's it's gonna have to go in three parts of this one. Um uh, through my statement of this. Uh first off, when it comes down to the bus kids side. If we're gonna use bus kids as racism, like as a race token, as a token, uh, the show off. Oh, we got a predominantly black ministry. And, oh, look how many bus kids, how many black bus kids we got on our bus. Um, let me just say this: shut the bus down, mm -hmm. because you ain't doing it for God, and you ain't doing it for, and you ain't doing it for, you ain't doing it for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. You're just doing it for yourself, and you're just there to please yourself and not please God. At the end of the day, Come on. And, and the second thing about this, when it comes down to the bus kids, um, if you truly care about bus kids, you allow these kids to come to church on Sunday night, on Wednesday night. You want to pick or choose who's spiritual and who's not spiritual. Last time I checked, if you feel like these some of these bus kids are not spiritual enough, then what are you? Mm. Yeah, that's what I gotta say. And so the third Amen. thing I want to say is this: uh, when it comes down to the legalistic or I, I would say lordship, you know, legalistic, Amen. like yeah. salvation side and stuff like that. But lordship wise, I would say, you know, by you being playing like you're God and playing like you, you're the man, like you're God, and you you control every little, every little aspect of their life. Mm -hmm. All I gotta say is this: you're running more people away from Christ than you are bringing them to Christ. Oh yeah, come on, you know, preach. This is why. This yeah. is why this is why when you walk inside an auditorium, there's not that many young people because it's dying out because you're playing like you're God at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You're yep. not going to reach kids by that. 
I guarantee you, this is why a lot of this contemporary modernized church movement is progressively growing so fast. It's because of these type of issues. It's more man-made standards than it is God's. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's more Lord. It's more lordship than it is discipleship. Yeah. So I, I, when it comes down to it, I, I just feel like you know we got to get our priorities straight. Mm-hmm. We got to get Amen. our our Amen. our act right, our our attitude right, and Amen. do it for God's sake, not mm-hmm. do it for man. Mm-hmm. I learned so much. I learned so much. Like growing up, I realized that I was trying to fit in this bubble, like oh, James was talking yes. about. Oh, yes. Yes. I try to fit in this bubble to make my like to fit into what they wanted me to be. And yep. I, in some ways, they notice how the way I preach my mm-hmm. my tone. You know, uh, Julius and us can agree. How many black preachers you see in the infant on them Baptist? You know, I only know size like, of being. Like, yeah, I only know like a handful. But um, when it comes down to it, like I feel like in some way they saw that. Oh, here's a black guy. He he's acting just like us. He's upholding to the same standard as us. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. we're gonna. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna help him. We're gonna reach him. We're gonna use him in a way. And I, I feel like it was this. It's like I was being used. Oh yeah. Because my my style of preaching, mm-hmm. I was yep. being used by, you know, because the color of my skin. And I just realized, like, I don't want to be used because of my mm-hmm. style of preaching mm-hmm. from the color of my skin. I just want to be used for God. And I, I told this to one of the evangelists. I told him, if it costs me the lose people to co- ask me to come preach at their church so be it. if it costs me to lose not having an opportunity to preach in uh camp meetings and and preaching a bunch of independent from baptist church so be it. i'll just go preach on the street you know Amen. At least I I with you. God at the end of the day Amen. so i i just realized that i'm not doing it from for a man i'm gonna do it for god at the end of the day mm-hmm. i can give Amen. a rip about what people think i can rip about what people say you know mm-hmm. you can take me out with your ministry you can yep. take me out. You can take me out of your bus ministry. You can take me mm-hmm. out of. Uh, you you don't have to let me preach at the church. Do whatever you want to do. But if I'm doing it for God and I'm doing it and I have a passion for it and it, mm-hmm. God called me to do what I'm doing, then so be it. You know, do Amen. whatever you got to do. Because I'm not compromising the doctrine or the word of God at the end of the day. You'll be a God pleaser, not personal. a man pleaser. Amen. Yeah. If you want to take it personal, take it personal. You know. Yep. Put on the bridges or something, or some manly job. Yeah, that's good, brother. Bowie, how about job. you? Um, I gotta say a few things. Uh, one, your testimony isn't found in the church. It's not found in a building. It's not found in man. It's found in God. Amen. And so that's why I don't think about that. And for you know the legalistic lordship side, um, mm-hmm. and just in general for anybody, mm-hmm. um, don't forget where you came from. Cool. Yeah. We all came from nothing. And we all yep. we all are nothing still. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, amen. But don't forget where you came from. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're all filthy sinners saved by grace. Hey, amen. Can't start from the bottom now we're right here. Now we have the <laughs> now we have the foot <laughs> of the cross, man. We came, from, we came from nothing, and God brought us into something. Mm-hmm. Amen. That'll preach, but go. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think that's it, bro. Oh man, guys, we thank you for tuning in to the this episode of Independent. Oh wait, no. <laughs> uh, the, the Blessed right. Christian Kid Podcast, man. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the other podcast, man. <laughs> God help us. But man, anyway, guys, guys, we hope you guys have a great day. Peace out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Bro, Tell you know what? I have an idea. Dude, Valerie should be our first preacher on the IBQ podcast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bro, CB Prison Fire, I don't care. <laughs>